Imagine you are taking a road trip. There are various ways to reach your destination. Some routes will be much shorter and more efficient than others. Logically, you'd probably take the fastest and most efficient route. But what if the fastest route is more expensive? What if it requires more time and resources to plan? These are the questions facing programmers when it comes to refactoring. Join us as we go to the University of Auckland to talk with Ewan Tempero, an associate professor in computer science, and his findings on the factors that determine refactoring decisions. Refactoring can improve the non-functional attributes of software, resulting in future cost savings and easier maintenance. It reduces code complexity and improves code readability. For this reason, there has already been a lot of research on refactoring, but Ewan Temporal's study is the first of its kind. So much of the current research, um, in fact over the last few years, has been looking at improving tool support, um, making the tools easier to use, allowing people to better manage their code once they have made the decision to refactor. What's different about our study was we were asking about that initial decision, not if you had to refactor what would you do, but would you refactor or not? And I think that this is a question that has not really been asked of developers in, in any previous research. Just like any other survey-based research study, how the questions are phrased is just as important as the results of the study. With this in mind, Tempero and his colleagues chose participants who were doing object-oriented language development and used realistic scenarios to ask design-related questions. We chose a couple of very simple design heuristics that has been discussed in the research literature for, for, for many, many years, and we were interested to see what the developers attitudes were towards these very simple heuristics. So the two heuristics were um, based on the well-known metric suite by Chidamba and Chimera. Um, one was weighted method count, which is essentially just a count of the number of methods in a class, and the other is depth and inheritance tree, which is for a given class how deep it is in the inher inheritance hierarchy. Uh, so the question that we asked in our survey was, did you believe in either of these heuristics and to what degree would you do work if you discovered that your code did not meet those heuristics. Out of the 3,785 survey participants, only 10% agreed that there should be a limit on the number of a class. Surprisingly, within this group, only 60% said they would actually refactor according to the limit. For depth of a class in a hierarchy, more thought there should be a limit at 25%. However, the number who would actually refactor was proportionally fewer at only 40%. So what we were seeing was inconsistency between whether they agreed with the heuristics and whether they would do anything about it if they discovered they weren't actually following the, the design guidance. And we thought this was interesting because on the one hand they, they thought they should be following this advice but they wouldn't do anything about it. So that got us interested to understand why they were believing the advice but not prepared to do any refactoring to improve their design. The survey was designed to allow free text commentary after each question, and many of the participants were more than willing to provide quite detailed information regarding the refactoring decision. Much of this commentary was, was extremely valuable and, and talked about why they would or would not refactor to resolve these design issues. So what we did was we looked at this free text commentary and essentially mined it to understand what were the reasons for not doing the refactoring when in fact by their own admission they would prefer to improve their design. What was surprising was they did not blame tools. They did not say well we don't refactor because our tools aren't good enough. They didn't mention tools hardly at all. Um, and this was surprising because this is where a lot of the current research is being done in improving tool support for refactoring. Find out more in Barriers to Refactoring, a contributed article in the October 2017 Communications of the ACM.